I'd like to call to order and welcome everyone to a um, regular public meeting for the Lower Gwinnett Township Board of Supervisors for Tuesday, September 26, 2023. The Board of Supervisors met in executive session on September 30th, no, on September 20th, 2023, and prior to tonight's meeting to discuss matters of real estate, litigation, and personnel. I'm going to start off with uh, public comments on items that are not on the agenda. Are there any public comments? Can you just come forward and state your name and your address? Hi, uh, Kate Madden. I'm 916 Penland Pike, and um, I'm here to uh, inquire about the status of the second self, uh, cell phone tower that we're um, considering building. Second one, what, what are you calling the second one? This, oh, so the first one I believe is at Penland Woods, and then, okay. the, second, and then the other one was gonna be here, but now we're looking at other options. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our, our solicitor if you want to give an update. You can stay there if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Um, yes, other options are being explored. Um, one uh, would be the Gwen and Mercy Elementary School. Uh, there has been, I'll say there have been discussions between uh, Rise Up Towers and uh, the school uh, that have gone to this point, I would say favorably, but there isn't a definitive deal that's been made just yet. But it's, I would say, headed in the right direction. <laughs> Thank you. Any additional comments? You can come forward, sir. Daniel Steinman, 800 Norristown Road, Spring House, Pennsylvania. Read in your recent bulletin about trail etiquette and the danger of bicyclists. You may be going too fast and don't call out. I know there's not much you can do about people that you don't see, but it is a problem. The other one is, I went down to the end of the trail, Norristown Road, and you have a nice sign there that says no winter maintenance, snow, ice, and all. Walk at your own risk. I would suggest that there also be an addition or an extra small sign that says danger from falling limbs and trees all year long. It is a problem. If somebody gets hurt, I hope nobody does. So far, we've been very lucky. And I just brought a few pictures. I took fallen trees and then can't tell when they're going to go okay. or what causes it. Thank you. So that's just a suggestion. Well, this is towards towards Welsh Road? No, this is towards Norris Town. It's Looking towards As far as I can tell from the picture. That's on the pipe, but it goes down. Yeah, it's not unique to that trail. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've heard this. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're not alone in your concern. It does take place mm -hmm. all year long. And the sign would tend to make people think, well, it's not dangerous in the summer, it mm -hmm. can't be in the winter. Mm -hmm. Fair you. point. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional? Comments from the public? Yes. Okay. Just state your name. Is she here? Ms. Taylor, can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us? Me or someone else? No, you, you Ms. Taylor. Oh. Well, you said, I didn't understand. You said comments that are on the agenda or not. The first one were not, right? Yes. So now they are? No, we're we're still on public comments for items that are not on the agenda. Do you have a comment for something that's not on the agenda? No, I do not, Danielle. Okay. Any additional comments? From me? No, no, I'm just asking in general to all the public <laughs> that is here and online. Okay, so next up to general business. First up we have before us um, 
recommendation to authorize a public hearing to consider an amendment of conservation easement and any other requirements necessary to permit a cell tower in the maintenance area at Penland Woods Park. We have included in our board packet um, a memo from our township manager outlining, I think, the sequence of events as it relates to um, our public meeting on July 11th and a next steps. I don't know if there's anything additional this solicitor would like to add. No, I think the memo is very detailed and spells out the process. Okay. This was included in our board packet. It was online. Are there any questions from the board? I'll, I'll just note that I'm recused from discussing this issue. Any additional comments from the board? No. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, so we have before us a recommendation from our uh, staff to authorize the advertisement for a public hearing to consider an amendment of conservation easement and any other requirements necessary to permit a cell tower in the maintenance area at Penland Woods Park. I'd like to make a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And one recusal. Next up, um, we have before us the approval of a historic marker for Penland School. Um, included in our board packet is a memo from our township manager outlining the application that has been received as it relates to install a, township, a historic marker recognizing the history of the Penland School. In addition, we have included in our board packet um, an application um, from Ms. Jones outlining uh, the history as well as documenting some resources related to how that was compiled are there any and, and reasonings in support of research are there any questions from the board seeing none are there any questions from the public first of all yes i have a major question first of all why is miss gloria's application on there and not mine so you're saying there was only one application no i did not say that i think included in our board packet was the application from miss jones well, why was her? <sighs> Listen, I didn't come today because I was exhausted and I'm exhausted behind this process, but there was something that Janine wrote in her email that made more sense to me than anything. I want to go on record saying I understand and I see the point of view that, you know, having it this year without a marker, without having a, an acknowledgement of the hundredth year this year without a marker doesn't really make sense. But if you have it when a marker is available and that just may happen to be 2024, then you still acknowledge that it's been a hundred years. So I get it. I get it that it's, um, that my perspective and her perspective or the perspective of the board, I don't know who she was talking about. So I just wanna say that the main thing is that something gets acknowledged about that spot. I think it's still atrocious and ridiculous that I've had to have been run around for a year, um, more than a year, because I did send you an email that I wrote to you, and I know, Danielle, it was to you as well, in January of 2022. So we sit here on the 26th of September, 2023, and I still feel disrespected. And... Um, I don't know why, Danielle, you have never really responded to me directly, but I find that disrespectful. Um, I sat there and I listened to Ms. Gloria and I don't disagree with the historical context. And personally, I think that the Lower Gwinnett Township um, should do something to rectify what went on in that community for 31 years in the modern world, modern America at the turn of the century. Um, but I wanna just make it clear that there has to be a better way to be transparent about what you're doing. Because I think that if you can um, make provisions for Reverend Kwan to have some type of marker for his um, anniversary, then all along you could have done the same thing um, to acknowledge it this year. It doesn't make sense to have something in November or December to honor the year. So I just feel like you guys have disrespected me um, whether it's a leadership decision from Danielle, since she's chair, um, you've just disrespected me. And I'm going to go ahead with the fact that a historical marker is most important, but I want to be on record that it's just been pure disrespect. 
I've asked for a right to know request because I don't understand the process in which Ms. Gloria submitted the application um, the, the day of the historical meeting where I submitted it on September 13th. I want to know the difference. I want to know when the applications came out, when Reverend Kwan apparently submitted it two days later. How did he know? And did he do it on behalf of the church? So there's a lot of things that don't make sense to me about this process. And I feel like somewhere along the way, there was some bias and some covertness. And it's disgraceful. It's just simply disgraceful. And I wasn't going to track myself down all the way there to just see the faces and, and just get the glares and, and have the, the disrespect in person. I just don't have the time to do that. So I just want to go on record that I'm going to agree with not having it this year, but I hope that you'll do a very good job in being inclusive when you do get the marker, that you consider the generations of people, not just one side or not my side. There's a whole bunch of people in a hundred years that have been impacted by that space, by the baseball field. So I wanna be a part of that process because I legitimately submitted an application. So that, that I'm in favor of a marker whenever it happens. But I think that when you look at, and the history will show that you made all these provisions to rush for Reverend Kwan, but then we're gonna see how long it takes you to get a marker a a metal marker for um, the Penland School. So I just think it's a bad precedent that you've set. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional comments? Gloria Jones has a comment. Go ahead, Ms. Jones. Um, I um, <laughs> worked very hard following the directions for a marker application. And um, anyone could make or apply to have a marker. And so I followed the directions of the marker application. I did some research because I was interested in seeing what uh, other markers had on them. And I checked through some states and saw that our application was very similar. So I, I worked a long time on it. And my um, reason for submitting a marker was because I felt that the um, Penland Elementary School and what happened after the 1954 Supreme Court decision was very important. I spent seven years in that school. I also <laughs> was taken to the Penland School Field and watched by my cousins as my father played basketball with the other young men. And that field has been very important to the community of Penland. Uh, and when I submitted my letter, uh, to Mr. Metcalf, who, who was the chair of the committee, I mentioned also that in some way that recognition could be given to the Penland Elementary School grounds, still known as the school field to village residents, and that for over six generations, the school field had been a place where the African-American residents of Penland Village carried out their family recreation and social activities. It was very important to all of us in Penland. And I kind of thought that um, since this was a, a historical marker, that we would consider the two um, places and that it would cover all in Penland. And this is a historical marker we, when things began. And so I thought it was important to put it in um, historical context. And that's what I did. And I understood that uh, people were going to submit uh, marker applications um, in the last um, more um, advisory committee's meeting. And so that's what I did. And um, anyone else who wants to submit an application should feel free to do so. 
And there's an opportunity to submit uh, applications three times. If the committee and the township doesn't like what it says, they have an opportunity to revise as they would like. So whether it be my application or Reverend Kwan's application, I don't have very much to, to say about that, but like I'm saying, anyone. So uh, if someone wants, uh, feels disappointed, then they need to submit an application and to follow the directions of the application. Uh, but I do uh, think that the um, school board um, desegregation case was a very historic uh, event. So that was my focus. So uh, thank you for letting me uh, comment on that. Thank you. Are there any additional comments? So we have before us a memo that was prepared by staff that outlines um, the application and the recommendation of the Historic Advisory Committee. They voted at their meeting on September 21st, 2023 on this application. And they made the recommendation to the Board of Supervisors to approve a historic marker for this site of the Penland School while they finalized their review and the proposed wording for the marker. So this application um, for this historic marker, we're just voting on the fact of, of the marker at this location is before us. I'd like to make a motion um, to approve the Penland Park site for a historic marker. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, thank you. Next up is the consideration of a requested PennDOT to add bike sharrows on Evans Road. I think we have someone from Montgomery County before us. If you could just come up and state your name. Hello, Supervisors. My name is Andrew Turner. I am a transportation planner with the Montgomery County Planning Commission. Thank you. I don't, yeah, I don't know if the people online can hear you. You might have to pick up the microphone. Hey, hello, my name is Andrew Turner. Um, I'm a transportation planner with the Montgomery County uh, Planning Commission. Thank you. So what, what bef what's before us is, I guess, the consideration of a request um, on behalf of Montgomery County uh, for Lower Gwinnett to consider a bike path on Evans Road? Um, yeah, this is um, part of the PennDOT uh, resurfacing program. Um, so basically, PennDOT releases its schedule for resurfacing. Um, this section of Evans Road is due to be resurfaced next year. And basically to encourage um, bicycle facilities on PennDOT infrastructure, they go through their resurfacing uh, schedule and kind of assess um, whether they are viable for bike lanes or shadows. A shadow is a kind of marking for a shared, um, it's, I guess it's a combination of share and arrow. Um, so it's not a specific bike lane, it's a share of the road. Um, a pavement marking. Um, and basically they consider a, whether a bike lane or a shadow is viable due to the width of the road, um, the speed of the road, the average uh, daily uh, traffic on the road, um, and the county and DVRPC, which is the Metropolitan uh, Planning Organization, um, kind of help facilitate the process for PennDOT. Um, so this year um, we have uh, looked at this section of Evans Road and it seems to be suitable for, yeah, shadow pavement markings. Um, are there any questions from the board? I have a couple questions, but does anybody else have any questions that you want to ask? I, I, I have a question, uh, but Danielle, you go ahead. I'll, I'll ask after. Okay. Um, so you, you did talk about that you evaluated the width, the speed, and, and how soon it was going to be resurfaced. Was there any consideration, I think, to the traffic and the windiness of Evans Road? It's not necessarily a straight road, and it seems like it might be slightly hazardous to have bikers on that road. Um, 
As a, yeah, um, so they do, Pendo um, do consider the um, average uh, daily traffic counts and the speed on the road. Um, this is also a PennDOT bicycle route. Um, it's Route S, which runs basically um, on the southern end of the state. Um, so we kind of look at the shadows. Um, there's potentially cyclists on the road already, and the shadows kind of adds to that safety element for potential cyclists that are going to be on that road already. So is it more because it aligns with the path that PennDOT would like bikers to take, or is this the best road out of all the roads in Lower Gwinnett? Um, <laughs> for sure, the route um, plays a part, but um, it's primarily um, kind of the safety aspects of the width, the amount of traffic, and the speed limit um, that PennDOT um, determine whether the road is... Um, good for shadows or bike lanes or not. <laughs> um, Worcester, uh, they got their section um, on Pothouse Road uh, resurfaced this year, mm -hmm. and that is part of Route S as well, which is a bit further up to the east. So, so when we make the request, and I would have to approve it, um, yeah, there would be, so I guess the next step in the process would be an official letter to PennDOT saying that you're essentially interested in this. Um, and then there would be back and forth and um, PennDOT would still need to do the engineering specs um, and determine exactly where all the shadow markings are going to be. And then you would, assuming things go ahead, the township would go into an agreement for maintenance of those shadows, of the pavement markings. Um, it's difficult to determine how many times in between repavings they would need to be repainted, but that would be um, the township's responsibility in between pavings. The initial but the, the initial markings would be PennDOT's financial responsibility and then everything else would be our responsibility? Yes, in between repavings, yeah. In between repavings, and then if it was repaved, PennDOT repaves it and then... And we'll mark the shadows again, assuming that it's still deemed viable by okay. PennDOT. Essie? Yeah, um, it's, so I, I agree with what Danielle said. The, there's two blind curves on Evans Road going out toward Route 63. And even when I'm in my car, I'm a little nervous going around those corners. Um, it, it, is there a proposal to widen uh, and put a safe lane in there for bicyclists? Uh, because it's not, as it stands now, it is, I don't, think it's all that safe even if there's not a lot of traffic there are some um there would be no um, additional widening or any construction it would just be repaving the roads and putting down the markings um in, in regards to the um Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Chad Dixon from McMahon, a township traffic engineer. Um, in regards to the issue of uh, the S curves on the northern segment of Evans Road. Um, PennDOT did come through earlier this year um, as part of their low cost safety improvements program and added a number of uh, warning signs and advanced pavement marking legends um, for those S curves. Um, that was um, pointed out to PennDOT approximately two years ago by the township and was added into the low cost safety improvements plan, similar to the Gypsy Hill Road project uh, recently. So PennDOT has um, gone in and done some work um, in that S-curve area recently to um, address the concerns the township has had with that, with that segment of Evans Road. Is there, is there any consideration for, there's no lights in certain areas of Evans Road. Uh, there's not street lights. No street lights now. So, is there any consideration for that? It just seems like we're introducing the idea of take your bike out. I think people to... are biking anyway, right? Do you? Yeah. So, I think that's the point. Yeah, excuse me, Janine. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. It's my understanding that this is already a pre routed Pennsylvania official bike route mm. along Evans Road. Yes. And the, the, the addition of these shadows will actually aid in the safety of the cyclists who are following this 
Road. We believe so, yes. So you just didn't pick Evans Road willy nilly in Lower Brennan Township. You chose this because you're trying to do this through the course of the statewide route. Um, well, I I should say we didn't make those, the county didn't make those decisions. It was PennDOT that made right. those decisions, yeah. Um, but I believe so, PennDOT, yes. The, as I said, it's the, the safety is the main concern. It's the width of the road, the ADT, and um, the uh, speed of the road that they consider. So the PennDOT kind of um, hires, so to speak, the Montgomery County Planning Commission to be their advocate for this um, initiative? Um, it's through a DVRPC that we kind of coordinate. Um, so we just kind of help facilitate, yes. So PennDOT identified it. They came to you and said, through the coordination with the DVRPC, go ahead and ask the municipalities to ask us. It, we, we um, DVRPC and um, the county also uh, looked at it as well after PennDOT um, kind of pushed it onto us essentially. Um, it's also part of our bike, the county's bike Monco route due to the route being a PA, a PA bike route as well. So it's in one of our, um, the county's plans. Where, where does the road, the bicyclist go after the person reaches the end of Evans Road? Um, is, is there any plan to extend the markers beyond Evans? Um, well, the bike route, um, bike route S is already signed, and that continues actually on, I think it's 309 for a short section. Um, <laughs> but basically, um, when the next section comes up for resurfacing, this process will start again for that section. Um, we have two sections that are being resurfaced in the county in 2024. Um, so I'm not sure what the next few years will unfold at the moment. You, you don't. You certainly don't mean 309, that you, the <laughs> bicyclists <laughs> are on 309. I have my map here. And which the speed is like 65. Um, no, bike route S goes on to 309. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I cannot agree with that. My, my only concern would be for the board. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Paul Kenny, police chief. We have residents, we have non-residents come to our parks because we advertise the trails and how beautiful they are and they're safe. The board recognizes Evans Road. And if we have an outsider trying to pick a bike route for a day that has no idea what Evans Road looked like, but somebody feels it's safe to ride there. And Janine, if you rode there with your kids, you would turn around. Mm -hmm. You would not. So... I would, I shake my head when I see that. I, I might've misunderstood. I thought, I thought this was already part of a bike route. And so we're just, they just want to mark it um, as such. Yes, um, there's already signage on the side of the road. There's um, already signage that it's a bike part of this. Yeah, route. on um, the, the sign up on the memo is um, on the side of the road. Um, uh, it, yeah, it's, that's correct. If you go on, there's a website that shows you um, Route S through the entire state. Evans Road is already designated um, on that map as part and of it's, And that's Route designated S. by PennDOT. By PennDOT. So they just create bike routes. Okay. I, I did bring it up, and we're going to try to bring it up on the big screen. But um, Do we have when we're talking sign? about 309, I think you're actually talking about Bethlehem Pike. So it, it isn't it isn't the 309 highway, Tessie. Um, My goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to see if if uh, Jamie can bring it up on the big screen, but it's like a little portion of um, Bethlehem Pike that then connects to Hartman Road and then goes over the Keenis Road. If you go to PennDOT, uh, bike route S. Yeah, I, I am certainly in favor of increasing um, safe uh, roadways for bicyclists, but um, I feel nervous when the road has two curves, even if they're well marked, I still feel very nervous about two uh, blind curves and uh, encouraging people to ride on that section. Yeah. 
You can, you can zoom, zoom in. Zoom in and move over. Yeah. Um, so these current signs that say bike route S are up, is what you're saying mm -hmm. on Evans Road. Yes. Okay. Is is the state's plan? I guess I'm just trying to understand the process. So they've marked out a bike route and then is the idea that anytime one of the roads on that bike route is up for resurfacing, they want to put, you know, either a bike lane or a Sharrows because it's already part of the bike route. The, the routes have been established for a while um, and it definitely goes through another, every time a resurfacing road comes up, it goes through the vetting process again of um, safety, um, a, a average daily traffic with okay. the road. Um, so, you know, if other roads would get um, bike lanes if they're wide enough, um, it's just that this is obviously a, a narrower road, so um, the shadows are the recommended treatment. Um, Do they I, ever recommend no treatment on, like if it's part of the bike route, would they ever say, we're not going to put any signage I, markings on the road? I, I do not know that. Um, okay. They have two on the schedule for 2024. I'm sure there's a lot more resurfacing going on in the county sure. that they've not passed on to us okay. for our shadows. Although I, okay. I'm assuming that. When, when PennDOT developed these routes across the state, they were evaluated by each of PennDOT's engineering district um, for safety. So, you know, there was a safety evaluation completed by PennDOT at the time those um, routes were designated. When they come through and resurface and look to add these markings and signs, the safety group at District 6, which is the district for, for Lower Gwinnett, will do another evaluation just to make sure that it can still be done in a, in a, safe, um, in a safe manner. Um, but they do it to, to resurface the entire route at once would of course be a, a significant massive project. Sure. So the strategy has been just to knock off um, segments of it over time as part of their annual um, resurfacing program. And, and do they feel that this increase, this will increase biker safety? It won't um, sort of draw and like almost create what you guys call a uh, like families or nuisance. an attractive nuisance it's like families nuisance. now think it's safe to bike down Evans Road. I... It, I, I, it's gone through yeah PennDOT's um, vetting process. So uh, you know PennDOT are um, you know have approved shadows on the road. Um, yeah, uh, I can understand that if you put markings on the road, then maybe that will attract more people, but the people that are already riding, uh, riding on the, the road, okay. you put shadows down, then that increases visibility for them. Um, it's already a bike route. Yeah. I understand. And presumably cars, when they see the markings, will be aware that this is, not, this is a bike road and maybe they didn't know that before. So maybe it will calm some traffic. It will definitely make the route more visible to, uh, to drivers. Are they obliged to behave driving a certain way when they see these shadows on a road? Um, it is essentially um, awareness that because they're sharing. That there will be cyclists. They are sharing the road with the cyclists, yeah. Hmm. And the driver's test? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the speed limit is as well, so. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify for Tessie, it actually does go up 309. I apologize. It goes up. To Hartman. It goes up to Hartman Road near the quarry. So I was incorrect. It isn't just Bethlehem Pike. It is going up 309. Oh. Um, I'm just wondering. Um, <laughs> it's it's, it must be right. Has PennDOT ever come out and once they evaluated it, when they were doing the resurfacing, made a determination that, that actually this isn't the correct route? Not that I'm aware of, um, but there is another process once the letter from if if you all decide to submit the letter then the engineering still to take place and okay. then there would be coordination between yourselves and Pendo at that point and so um so if they come out and they do their surveys and their engineering there's a possibility that they determine once they see it on the ground and realize that they're, they might not be a good idea we shouldn't go through with it 
and they're just looking at all these roots on paper. Um, I couldn't speak to that process, but um, I guess there's a possibility that that could happen. And I apologize. I know you're from Montgomery County. We're grilling you like your pen dog. <laughs> <like> <laughs> I apologize. It just seems so perplexing to us that they chose this road of all the roads they could have chose. Yeah, some, we have some nice, wide, beautiful roads with well lit um, that might be safer to welcome bikers. Yeah, well, they're just not on the, on the there, but they're not on this route. Right. Yeah, the other, the other really issue good. is when there is a biker and a uh, an automobile driver wants to swerve around that biker on a narrow road like Evans, that, that is a very unsafe uh, situation. And it happens. I, I see it happen, uh, I don't know, I, I would say once every, I don't know, maybe two months or, or less, that drivers don't like to go slow behind bicyclers and so they're always trying to swerve around them into the oncoming lane so just to be clear and i think i, I think i want to understand what's before us we have to consider this we don't need to vote on this tonight is that accurate um i th think the deadline would be the end of october to get and I can touch with PennDOT, I okay. believe so. Okay, I think I did see that. So, so I think I would time. want our traffic engineer and our police chief to weigh in a little bit. I don't know if you guys are comfortable making any kind of statements today or if you want to wait to the next We can meeting. certainly collaborate and, and discuss it if, at one of the October meetings. With yeah, the and if further. you could come to us with a recommendation, mm -hmm. I think some of the concerns that we have, if you give us any additional insight prior to the deadline. Sure. Um, I think Do you have any numbers on how this is probably a pen drop question the use of this stretch of the route? I don't think I've ever seen a cyclist. Oh, I yeah. I well, how many cyclists are on? I I I don't know. It's a it's a it's a very low volume road um, oh, for so. for vehicle traffic. Oh, that's not true. Uh, Evans Road is a cut through, and. Um, Maybe it's it's backed off a little bit now since 202 is open, but uh, there's a fair amount of traffic on Evans Road, at least the section down toward um, Gypsy Hill. And then what happens if the traffic is not safe? That's going to be my next question. <laughs> um, the road will be resurfaced without any shadows, basically. Yeah. We don't so have any control over their bike route. It right. just won't and have they, that specific link yeah. Shero's identified. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it would remain the same, but with new surfacing here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. Happy to. Okay. Well, we thank you so much for coming before us, Mr. Turner. I appreciate your time, and I'm sorry again for us grilling you like your pen dot. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, maybe next time Panda should come to the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> so we can make Panda, yeah, make Panda feel bad. Not this. Okay. Uh, Harry, did, did you have a com comment? You can just come. Yeah, come on up. Harry Hellerman, one hundred Coventry Lane. <laughs> I've been bicycling in this area for 30 years. This is a subject that's very near and dear to me. As, as I understand it, S route was planned and it could only use Pennsylvania roads, not township roads. Mm. So that limited them severely. Mm. Now there are a lot of ways to get around Lower Gwinnett and Evans is not the ideal. Mm -hmm. Certainly 309 is, I'm with Tessie on that. <laughs> I haven't seen anybody on 309. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want them to be up, especially up at Hartman. Mm -hmm. That's a mess up there. So, you know, as far as marking the road, it can't hurt. But the board has to consider the cost of maintenance of, of the painting. That's, that's the issue you need to, to deal with, but it can't hurt. Mm -hmm. There are clubs, I belong to two local clubs, and they do use Evans. Mm -hmm. uh, they come in, they'll come across from um, English Village, mm -hmm. across behind, um, stables mm -hmm. cut straight across and take Evans out to 
Plymouth Road. We'll do that. That's, in that's, a, in that's a club that, that clubs will use that. They won't use 309. They'll cross it. Yeah. But that, that's my understanding about Route S. Okay. And I've done sections of Route S, and they're not very friendly. They're not. They are not friendly. Okay. Especially but I see all of the routes from here from here to the river. They are not friendly. Okay. You see many shadows? No. no. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, it can't hurt. I mean, it's been my experience in this township that the board has always looked to try and make it safer for pedestrians and bicyclists. Build that into your equation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, any additional comments on the bike route? Okay. <clears throat> Next up, we have before us uh, a memo, a recommendation from our township manager around. Um, consideration for award of a needs assessment for an RFP for our public works facility. Um, included in that um, memo um, is that the identifying um, that at our July 25th, 2023 board meeting, we authorize staff to issue a request for an RFP for an architect to complete a feasibility study. Um, the deadline for proposals is Wednesday, August 30th. They indicated the five um, firms that did submit and included information from those five firms and have made a recommendation. Um, the recommendation is for GKO, which is Goshaw Kane and O'Rourke Architects in the amount of $18,000 to complete a feasibility study and a needs assessment for a public works facility. All information was included in our board packet and was online. Are there any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Seeing none, um, we have before us the consideration of this uh, recommendation from staff. I would like to make a motion to approve the contract with Gottschall Kane and Work Architects in the amount of $18,000 to complete a feasibility study and a needs assessment for a public works facility. Is there a second? Second. All those in added notice that it's an LGT, Lower Winter Township business, so that's always a nice cherry on top. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Thank Aye. You. Motion does carry. Um, next up is the review of the 2024 minimum municipal obligation for township contribution. We did discuss this briefly at our last board meeting. Um, we have included in this board packet uh, recommendation, just trying to get to the memo, hold on one second, um, from our finance director. And the finance director's recommendation is to reduce the rate of return um, from 7% to six and a half. Um, it, it, it identified that the pension advisory committee met on January 23rd and received recommendations from our actuary. Um, and there's further details in that memo that outline the rate, um, the MMO amounts, um, and the calculation. Um, are there any questions for our finance director or any questions from the board in general? Just confirming that the decrease of the interest rate will result in a net obligation to us of about $120,000. Yeah. We cannot hear online. Y yes, um, to go from 6.75 uh, to 6.5%. Yes, it's about $115,000. And what are, are we at 7% now? Yes, we are. So what's that jump to 7 to 6.5? That is... Um, I'm not I sure I figured that one out. No, I think it's about another um, $80,000, but I have to go back and look. So about two hundred grand or so of an obligation for us if we lower the interest... The in, yeah, the rate of return. The, the, the rate of return, which okay. makes sense given rates of return. Yes, <laughs> and that will stabilize it a little bit more so that it will even out as you go forward. And we're going to pay that extra either hundred and twenty or hundred or two hundred thousand dollars if the rate of return isn't seven percent anyway. Yes. We're just going to pay it in advance so that it's all trued up. Is that 
Right, and then you're investing opportunities if you know you're trying to get to seven or a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more risky. So it would be better to stabilize it at a lower rate of return. That's more, more realistic. Gotcha, thank you. Any additional questions from the board? Any questions from anyone online? Seeing none, so we have a, we have before us a recommendation to reduce the rate of return of assumptions for the uniform and non-uniform defined benefit pension from seven point seven percent to six and a half percent. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next up is our financial year to date. There is a review of that that was included in our board packet. Are there any questions for our finance director? None. I, I, I have a question. Is, is Are we all square with the sewer fund now? With yes. Bucks County Water and Sewer, even the stuff historically that we couldn't figure out, we figured out? Yes, I figured that out a couple months ago. Okay, it was in the great. memo, yes. And now each month when it comes, we um, reconcile to them. To the Wonderful, so, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Any additional questions? I like, thank you so much for the fun balances. I, I appreciate them. Yeah, not a problem. Um, seeing no questions, we don't have to vote to approve. Um, next up, we have a review of our township engineer's report. It was included in our board packet. It is also online, outlines the activities of our township engineer. Um, are there any questions from the board? I thought we approved we 6.5. Approved, we approved 6.5. I'm sorry. You didn't hear it? I'm sorry. It's only 8 o'clock, guys. <laughs> we approved 6.5. <laughs> sorry. If you, I think she was referring to your report that you gave us. If you don't have to approve that. Oh, okay. That's what I was saying. I'm sorry. The, the, the financials, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. So before us, we have the Township Engineers Report outlines all of the general township projects um, work perform performed last period as it, as it relates to um, August and work to be performed this period is in September. Are there any questions from the board? Any question from anybody, the public and anyone online? Seeing none, we thank uh, Mr. Hirsch for the lovely report. Uh, next up is a review of our traffic engineer report. Um, it includes uh, update on projects that the in traffic engineers are working for currently. Are there any questions um, for a traffic engineer? I have a question. Um, and, and you might not be able to answer this because you may not know it's not um, township work, but uh, there's been some work going on uh, at the um, Plymouth meeting, I mean, sorry, Plymouth Road, uh, Evans Road area. And I was just wondering, Chad, if you knew the status of what's going on there and anticipated completion. I was not aware of that work. I didn't notice anything most recent time that I drove through there. So I'll look into that further, whether that's PennDOT or Montgomery County um, working out there right now. Yeah, they, um, about um, several days a week, they block off um, the our path to get to the post office and train stop. So it's, um, there. there is a, a way to jog around the obstruction, but it's, um, it's very uh, annoying and it seems to be interminable. So if we could get uh, a bead on what the um, schedule is and the completion, uh, projected completion, that would be great. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll look into that. I know Pico has been doing some utility work along different segments of Plymouth Road for a few months now, and that may be it, but we'll look, we'll look into it further and get back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have a question, not for Chad, it's for Fred. With the Penland new trail crossing, do there's trail approach work the pavement markings, I yes. think that's obvious what that is. But what, what exactly are you doing with the trail approaches? And, and do you have any idea when we can expect that final inspection from PennDOT and it to be fully operable? So the trail approaches are adjusted there to the new crossing. I saw there's a sign, a stop sign that was for the old trail that needs to be removed still. There's yield markings and the uh, yield bars uh, they still have to be put in for the final inspection to meet the original plan. So we have a contractor, the weather hasn't been cooperating. So we should be wrapping that up soon. And uh, it's usable. I mean, people can walk on it. It's just the markings on the road aren't complete. So you can push the buttons and the- And the lights, that they're not on. That's subject to the, the final inspection? Yeah, the, the flashers themselves can't be activated until the final inspection um, by PennDOT. Um, like Fred mentioned, the crossing's usable, it's just yeah. the flashers aren't functional yet. We have that scheduled? Um, once the pavement markings are done, then PennDOT will schedule it with us, but they, okay. they won't give us any dates until that pavement working work is done. We have to approve the Evans Road Shadows first. I'm envisioning like, like the Stop. four beetles walking across with the flashers on, the so running. Maybe the four supervisors. There you go. Will it be this Photo fall? Up. Will it be this fall, we think? Yes, it should be. Okay. You want us to run across it? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Abbey Road. Let's skip, let's skip. Right. Abbey Road. Like Abbey Road. <laughs> I get to be George Harrison. Yeah, you should definitely do it. That would be really cute. George was wearing shoes, though. <laughs> Any additional questions for our traffic engineer? Any from the public? Thank you so much for your lovely report. Uh, next up is the approval of the minutes for our September 12, 2023 meeting. Did everyone have a chance to review those minutes? Yes. I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of what date are we talking about here? September 12th. September 12th. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It carries. Um, in our board packet was uh, highlights from the supervisor liaisons related to um, our committee assignments. Are there any questions related to those reports? Seeing none, move on to staff updates. Um, I think you're going to update us on the TMDL team. Um, we had our meeting last week, and the majority of the management committee voted for the consortium um, governance structure. So um, there's a meeting this week and they'll work out the details of implementing that type of structure, um, and incorporating that into the plan that will get submitted to DEP. Thank you. Was there any, any real objection or no, everybody? Um, there wasn't, there was discussion about a stormwater authority. Um, there were, um, basically the, the two boroughs were in favor of the stormwater authority, um, just because they, you know, they're, they're kind of smaller, they don't have a lot of room for projects. Um, but I think overall, they were um, at the end of the conversation, everybody was pretty much agreeable. So um, there was concern about what type of um, protection the wastewater treatment plants would have under an authority because they couldn't be a dual authority. So um, that kind of, I think, changed some people's minds about that. So um, so they're just going to work towards that um, moving forward. So, thank you. Thank you. I suppose the Spring House intersection construction. Not sure. sure. Just wanted to give a, a brief update since our last traffic engineer report at the end of August. 
some work has been done. Um, Pico did um, finally get their poles moved to the new locations and moved their lines to those new poles. Utility work isn't done yet. Um, there's some fiber optic lines and Verizon lines um, that have to be moved by those utility companies to the Pico poles. So uh, JDM, the, the township's contractor, um, is coordinating in, in communication um, with Pico and those utility companies um, about getting um, those additional lines moved to the new poles um, over the next few weeks. Um, some construction work that they were able to complete over the last month was to install one of the underground stormwater basins and some other stormwater um, facilities uh, within uh, the project limits. Um, we're starting to enter another period where we're in a little bit of a holding pattern until those additional utility lines can be moved to uh, the new poles and the old poles can be removed. Um, but we have uh, a progress meeting with JDM uh, this Thursday um, to talk about some more minor work um, that can be done um, in the interim while those additional utility items are being taken care of so we can continue to show some progress out there. So um, we'll be able to provide another update after that progress meeting on Thursday. Were the, um, were the polls on the part of Norristown Road between McKean and Bethlehem Pike, were, were they were they moved like any great distance? The, the, there were some. There were I mean, some because it looked like they were barely moved, it, and I didn't understand why they moved them. At yeah, all. The, there were some that were moved just a very minor right. um, amount of distance, and they were just they were moved to get get the clearance. Um, the clearance area that PennDOT requires between the edge of the roadway and um, any utility poles. So there, I understand your question. There was a couple that were just the yeah, edgy exactly. bit moved. <laughs> just see a little light in between the old pole. And the right. Just a touch. Yeah. Uh, one further update while I have the microphone. <laughs> we did have the final inspection today um, for the McKean Road um, pedestrian crossing at the YMCA and the speed display signs with uh, PennDOT and Beacon's contractor, just some minor punch list items um, that need to be resolved and that should be done, um, you know, over the next few days to, to a couple weeks. So um, we're just about at the finish line um, there. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on the ship intersection construction? Additional? Next up, we have drainage improvements on Stonebridge Road. Oh yeah, we're just uh, wrapping up some replacement of stormwater pipe on Sto Stonebridge Road. It was damaged corrugated metal pipe. It actually was damaging the roadway and backing water up further up the road. So uh, our crews were out there working. The residents were very um, understanding because we had to block the road and it's cul-de-sac one way in one way out uh, so i mean we moved when they needed to get in and out uh, but they were very patient and we tried to get the work done as fast as we can the last few days the weather hasn't been cooperative so we have a little bit to wrap up but it should fix the problem with the road and let the water run through like it's supposed to thank you Supervisor comments. Is there anything additional from staff? No? Okay. Uh, Tessie, you want to start us off? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to um, uh, congratulate uh, the, um, the team that put together, particularly Sandy, moving the uh, Lower Gwinnett uh, Fall Fest indoors at the, uh, you know, the last minute. Um, I understand it went very well, and um, I'm sure all the residents who were able to attend uh, were appreciative. And um, that's all. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, certainly congratulations to the committee, the Fall Fest committee, Janine, <laughs> the fearless leader, <laughs> and the staff and the public works who really showed up um, strongly. It was definitely an, an 11th hour pivot Thank you to Ophelia bringing it inside for the very first time <laughs> in Township history. So uh, yeah, it was it was a great afternoon. 
Good job to all. Mm -hmm. I'll just echo what everybody else said and um, just pay a special thanks to our volunteers um, and uh, including, you know, we put a call out to residents to come help. And I mean, it was pouring rain and they were like schlepping carts and boxes um, from vendors to help load them up. Um, so it was really a great way for, you know, the community to come together. It was amazing. And thank you to everybody. That's all. Yes, thanks to everybody who made Fall Fest such a success. Just want to echo it, echo all of those things. Also want to pay special attention to Sandy, who showed um, great abilities to pivot and resilience. The entirety of the Fall Fest committee helped and assisted. Also, we, we have to thank our gracious host, the Wissigan School District, for allowing us to use the high school at the very last minute without hesitation and without any additional questions. Them and their custodial staff were a great help in ensuring that the Fall Fest went on when most other activities were canceled. So I think it was a tremendous um, effort by all. Can't thank the Fall Fest Committee and the Park and Rec Committee as a whole and our um, community volunteers and all of the vendors that came out yeah. from our community that showed their wares. And it was a great day, great event. Um, with that, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.